Thank you for staying. Let's get into our first story. An earth dams constructed under the One Village, One Dam project in Bongo, Kasena, Nankana West, and Talensi districts, all in the Upper East region, dry up at least by January because the dams cannot hold enough water. Farmers in these areas say they leave the water for their animals to drink and are unable to farm during the dry season, as the program intended. In the first of a two-part hotline documentary, Thirsty Dams, uh, features editor Jojo Corbina reports that farmers want government to coerce contractors to return to the sites. Water to the northerner is like blood. When we have water, we can do a lot of things for ourselves. And without it, unemployment, poverty, and famine. To escape, many young people travel down south for supposed greener pastures. The NPP government provided a solution. One village, one dam. The dam candidate and then the vice, the running mates, visited a chief in one of these villages and met the women digging the ground with their bare hands for water. So when they saw that, they said, well, when we come to power, we will provide you with water that can be better than what you are using your bare hands to construct. And that is how come the promise of one village, one dam. <laughs> The policy appealed to the people in the northern regions. If the government came here and told us that they would be giving us dam, and our people assured them that if they give them dam, they also, they also let them laugh. And really, you can ask our assemblyman and even ask the MPP people what uh, this community did for them. They voted massively for them. A political promise that won the hearts and minds of the people. The dams should make it possible for farmers to farm all year round and break the cycle of waiting for the rains before cultivation. It was the reason why the people of Bongo sang and danced till they became drenched in sweat. When the president cut salt for the implementation of the project. We have begun the One Village, One Dam initiative. And you here in Bongo can see for yourself that we have begun the initiative. It is our intention that Bongo alone will get 10 dams this year. 570 are being built. You heard the minister across the three northern regions. And Bongo constituency alone is going to get 10 out of that 560, 570. This campaign promise has been fulfilled. Well, but not quite. Dam always take us two months to dry up. Only two months. Only two months. October, November. The water dry up. In November, like this, you see our pepper farm. You will like it. But where? No water again. My name is Jojo Kobinan. It has been five years since the dams were constructed. My job here is simple. Find out how the dams are serving the people as it should and what concerns the people have. I hope government will use the findings in this documentary to improve the current state of the dams. Well, on from there, the Defence Ministry says it is working to make Ghana an attractive location, an attractive location for suspected terrorists trooping in from neighbouring Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire and Togo. 
The Ghana Armed Forces is leading the operation to send illegal immigrants and others living unlawfully in the country's border communities back to where they came from. In an interview with Joy News's Dep uh, Joy News, Deputy Defense Minister Kofi Amankwa Menu said some of the suspected terrorists disguised themselves as nomadic herdsmen. He says more than 20,000 people have been repatriated, with more expected in the coming days. Most of them are seeking refuge in, in, in Ghana. And so we have groups of hatemen, terrorists, some members of these terrorism groups, you know, illegal immigrants, have finding their way to Ghana. Sad thing is that we have some of these people already within the country living in makeshift structures. And then some of them are also putting up with some family. The, the, the saddest of them is that we have families in Ghana who are taking money from these people and giving them, you know, places as farmlands and all that. Some communities in the uh, Upper West, Upper East, North East, and then the Northern uh, and Savannah regions, this problem is, is getting really bad. And so the, the armed forces is helping RESEC to really deal with this issue of not allowing, you know, these uh, illegal immigrants and, and the headsmen and these terrorist um, groupings free movement. We as a country have a duty to make sure that we provide security for our people. And so as long as they continue to be here, we will do our part not to allow them to have free movement so that they can do whatever they want to do. Just about yesterday, we have almost 20,000 illegal immigrants and uh, Fulani headsmen and all that. And then you'd be surprised. One person actually brought in about 15,000 cattle. Yes, you know what that means. They will have to find uh, a place for them to graze. And so farmers are also going to suffer and all that. It is the duty of the Ghana Armed Forces and RECSEC to provide security for our Ghanaians. And that we will do, as, no matter what it takes, we will do to, go to, to really protect our citizenry. I must also plead with our people living in these communities to as it were in Ghana, they say, shine your eye. And so the call to really report everything you see and everything you hear is more important now than ever. Well, let's stay on the political front, and the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagman, says there are more questions than answers surrounding a recently leaked tape which allegedly exposes a plot by a leading member of the governing New Patriotic Party and a senior police officer to oust IGP Dr. George Ekufu Dampari. The leaked tape also revealed efforts to rig the 2024 elections. Mr. Bagman's comments follow an urgent statement by Deputy Minority Leader Emmanuel Amakofibwa. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent, Kukwa Santa reports. The minority insists that a tape exposes a greater risk to the country's democracy, according to Emmanuel Amakufibua. In the least, the Interior Minister must commit to investigate the tape. When there's a leaked tape, when the leaked tape, there's the issues around the leak, it has to do with the IGP, the sitting IGP, and the attempt to remove him and the issues about 2024 election and what must be done to make sure that a new IGP is put in place who will collude with a sitting government to get a certain outcome. That must concern this parliament. It borders on the security and the stability of our country. And it's very important that is here, that this house, and I'm happy it's here, that this house wants to know who are those involved? What is the authenticity of that uh, leak tape? We need to find out. And I think all I'm asking, Mr. Speaker, is that we ask the Minister of State, who is responsible for this sector, to look into the matter. Some majority MPs have been criticizing their NDC colleagues for seeking to politicize this issue. Let me state clearly that as Minister for the Interior, it is my duty to make sure that there is peace and security in the country. And therefore, investigating any piece of information, I have no problem with it in principle. At all. At all. So to get the impression that an IGP can do something extraordinary wonderful to assess a party to win election is wrong. 
if there's a case I want you to be investigated, I, in principle, have no problem. But to go ahead and give the impression that a particular IGP presence or not, or whether he's office or not, will determine the outcome of election is wrong. But the NDC MPC, this is too big to let it slide. And Mr. Speaker, we do so not just for the professional integrity of the IGP and to preserve and protect him and empower him to ensure that elections in this country, even tomorrow, are conducted in a manner. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you have always thought as that. The word free and fair have constitutional meaning. When the constitution says that elections shall be conducted in a manner which is free. Free from what? Free from fear, free from intimidation, free from influence. It has a meaning. So free and then fair. So Mr. Speaker, to preserve our democracy and to protect the professional integrity of the Inspector General of Police and to appreciate what Dan Parry is doing in preserving this, we are requesting for a parliamentary inquiry into this matter. Police officers involved in the conspiracy to rig the upcoming election. Mr. Speaker, it should be a matter that should engage the attention of this House. And we're saying that Mr. Speaker makes appropriate directive so that this matter can be gone into and the veracity or otherwise of the audio authenticated. And if it is authenticated, those behind this whole thing should be punished. They should be prosecuted to serve as a deterrent. Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin has ruled that the House will investigate the matter. There is the need for an investigation. But going by the standing orders, I have to give proper direction as to the nature, the type of investigation. What is now left is the form and shape that this investigation will take. Will the Speaker of Parliament refer this to the Defence and Interior Committee of the House, which is already constituted to deal with this matter, or will an ad hoc committee be set up with members on both sides joining to deal with this matter? But what is clear now is that Parliament is taking this matter very seriously and that this is something that is beginning to shape up conversations ahead of the crucial 2024 elections, given some of the explosive things that the persons were said to have been uttering on this tape. And the minority say that this investigation is crucial to safeguard the country's democracy. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, Parliament House, Accra. Now, Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Dr. Sam Jonah, has described the exodus of health professionals as disheartening. He says the development is unhealthy and requires that government employ innovative ways to keep such brains in the country in furtherance of the attainment of universal health coverage. He was speaking at the maiden matriculation and graduation ceremony of the Asenman Nurses and Midwifery Training College. Dr. Sam Eswanjona says the number of health professionals that continue to leave the country is worrying. According to him, if the trend is not reversed, it may affect the country's health delivery system. It is disheartening to read and hear in the media the massive exodus of Ghanaian health providers, especially our nurses to seek inner pastures abroad. These are our heroes abandoning ship for better opportunities. As a nation, if we are to reverse this trend and meet the goals we have set for ourselves, then we need to take a critical look and devise innovative solutions to meet the challenges we face. We cannot simply afford this terrible exodus of the very people who will be entrust our lives with, particularly when we are in difficulties. It is common knowledge that the central government has a stretch beyond capacity. This has also been exacerbated by COVID-19 and the Russian Ukraine war, which is causing economic ripples across the globe. However, I would like to appeal to government to expedite the process of financial clearance for the payment of allowances to nurses, midwives, and trainees when they fall to you. Zipline 
through the National Drone Delivery Service has delivered more than 14.8 million units of life-saving medicines, vaccines, and blood products to health facilities by the end of 2022. While this feat is commendable, I would like to appeal to the government to expand on the use of telemedicine facilities to enable us to do the enviable gains. Deputy Education Minister and MP for Ascent South, John Intimfodjo, assured government will do a lot to address the challenges in the health sector. We are aware of the challenges, but much is being done, and soon we will see a combined effort, combined support that will reposition this institution and give it a facelift and upliftment in infrastructure and even more importantly in academic capacity. But as you go out there, I would want to appeal that you accept postings even to remote areas, hard to reach areas, places where your services will be needed the most, places where your presence will make the most impact and you would forever be blessed. Principal of the college, Ophelia Nkroma Joannis, highlighted some of the challenges the school has been grappling with. Our challenges are inadequate infrastructures and lack of financial clearance for our staff. We also need additional bars to complement the one we are using currently as the number is increasing. And we have inadequate clinical instruments and models to be used at the skills lab as well as additional computers to expand our ICT to enable us to have our online licensing examination. In the recent licensing examination results by the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Ghana, out of the 122 students presented by the college, the pass rate for the registered midwifery student was 96, while the registered general nursing student had a percentage of 86.2. Richard Kwejunya Akun reporting for Joy News. Now, Care Ghana is implementing a program dubbed Women for Rearing Project. This is a research development project that focuses on what it takes to develop a livestock vaccine delivery system that reaches women, uh, livestock keepers, and women animal health service providers. The Women Rearing Project is also to help address general and cultural barriers that hamper women ownership of livestock. Martina Bugri reports. Speaking on the sidelines of a research dissemination workshop in Tamale, program team lead cares Ghana's right to food, water and nutrition climate justice program. Agnes Noriba said even though the livestock industry has the potential to economically empower women, these women face challenges when it comes to being able to vaccinate their animals and also some cultural barriers. In most of in the communities that we went in, there are also um, cultural norms around uh, women's ownership and even the ability to openly declare that this boat belongs to me and so um, taking the decision herself to go and call the vet to come and vaccinate. She has to vaccinate um, through the husband and so if the husband is not willing and ready to vaccinate uh, the animals, it means that animals don't get vaccinated. Um, the women um, too are um, usually unable to sell the animals by themselves. So if she has a goat or chicken that um, she wants to sell, she has to do that through the husband or another member um, of, of the family or community who is in her. And so this limits the control she has over um, whatever income is made from the sale. Deputy Director at the Ministry of Agriculture, Abdul Razak Okan, said there was improvement in women access to vaccines since the start of the Women for Rearing project two years ago. Uh, and I think it's very, very refreshing because uh, when the, the, the program started since uh, two years ago, there are some considerable results. There are improvements, especially some improvements in, in the way you know women have access to, to vaccines, such as the uh, the new cancer. They are not allowed to actually assess them and even treat the animals. Uh, women can now, women in some parts of the country now have the opportunity to actually sell animals 
which hit that were not possible for them. So these basically are the things. From a policy point of view, we think that uh, we have to work more and make sure that these things are institutionalized and if possible, if possible bring out a regulatory framework to make it more practical. Thank you. The co-founder of Cow Tribe and co-implementers of the project said women play a critical role in livestock rearing and there is the need for women to be included when policies are being looked at. Uh, we've all uh, come to a conclusion that women um, play a critical role in, in livestock um, systems and, um, and making uh, services accessible to, to women has been a critical part of what my company is involved. Um, and today's conversation has come to that point where we have come to an agreement, a very strong conclusion that um, in the policy formulations, in the in the discussion about what services and what um, programs should be implemented in our farming communities, there is that critical need to take into consideration the, the role of women in that. Two of the beneficiaries, Emmanuel Azure and Alice Awini, said the project has empowered them economically. When we came and they have trained us on how and when to vaccinate them, the, our animals are now increasing. There's no any death recording again. And now we have now have uh, quality animals and we can now get income from them. All fathers scared our women from rearing. They could not have that opportunity to assist us in rearing. Though it was assisting, but it was just partially. But now they involve much in rearing, even to the extent of having their own ones. And therefore it helps in the way that when it comes to uh, family issues, it's more or less a cost sharing. Well, that is how we cap off the news. But up next, do stay for the news review. We'll be joined by executive member of the National Democratic Congress of South Africa. He joins us for a conversation. Do stay.